All right, in this video, we're going to be continuing on with lesson 6-5, and we're going to be working on which method of solving a system of equations to use. So in part one, we went over all three methods. We showed how to solve and when to use each one, um, either graphing, substitution, or elimination. In this lesson video, um, we're going to do the same thing, but we actually have to create the system before we can decide how to solve it. Okay, so this is whenever you have a word problem and you need to create a system and then figure out how to solve it. So it's not so much about the solving the system, it's about just answering the question, um, but you have to know how to use a system of equations to answer the question. All right, so in this example, um, a t-shirt printing company sells t-shirts for $15 each. The company has a fixed cost for the machine used to print the t-shirts and an additional cost per t-shirt. A fixed cost just means it costs you that one time. You bought a machine, that's all it costs. It doesn't cost you extra each time you use it, you just paid one time for it. And then each t-shirt that you buy, because you gotta have the blank t-shirts to print on, they each cost um, five, what does it say, an additional cost per t-shirt, and it shows us in the table what that costs. Use the table to estimate the number of t-shirts the company must sell in order for the income to equal the expenses. All right, so here in the table, t-shirt printing cost. Okay, so a printing machine is $3,000 and a blank t-shirt costs five. So these are expenses. This is what the money has, the company has to pay out, right? So these are expenses. And then how much does a company make? right? How does it make money? It sells t-shirts for $15 each. And so the question is, how many t-shirts does it have to sell to make as much money as it costs them to make the t-shirts, right? So here, we're just going to kind of follow the thought process. Know the initial income and the initial expense and the rates of change of each quantity with each t-shirt sold. Okay, so the rate of change here, I know that's confusing, like what are you talking about rate of change? What's changing, right? It's saying the total amount of money that you make per t-shirt or the total amount you spend per t-shirt. So the slope would be 15 over X when you're selling your shirts. For every shirt, your pocket's getting $15 bigger, right? You're making $15 per shirt. For two shirts, that's $30. For three shirts, it's $45. So our rate of change is $15 per shirt. It's costing us $5 to make each shirt, right? So $5 for one shirt. If I make two shirts, I have to spend $10 on the shirts. If I make three shirts, I have to spend $15, right? So expenses, this is income. We want to know when the two are equal to each other. When income equals expenses, this is what we're figuring out. So we need to write an equation for expenses. We need to write an equation for income and we need to set them equal to each other to figure out when they're equal, right? So here it says, let X equal the number of t-shirts sold and Y equals the total amount, okay? So income, and I'm gonna highlight this in yellow because I don't know about you, I'm a teacher, but in my brain, this stuff gets all like, I get confused. So I have to figure out a way to sort it out. All right, so for the money I'm making, total amount is Y. So the total amount of money I make is equal to the initial amount I had in the bank, and it doesn't say you had anything, so nothing, plus I make $15 per shirt, and X represents how many shirts, okay? The amount of money I have to spend the total amount I have to spend is I had to spend $3,000 on a machine and then I have to spend $5 per shirt, right? So quick math here. If you spend $5 on a shirt and then you sell the shirt for $15, you just made $10 per shirt, right? That's what your profit is, but we don't have to answer that question. All right, you can use substitution to solve the system, okay? So how can we use substitution? Well, in both of these equations, whether it's income or expenses, what we're making or what we're paying out, we use Y. Y represents the total amount. It's the same Y, right? So whether that Y is equal to this or that same Y is equal to this doesn't change. So if Y equals this, this has to be the same thing as this, right? So you can either substitute this up here in place of this Y 
or you can substitute this down here in place of this y. Doesn't matter because either way you're just setting these two things equal to each other. So that's what they're doing here. First equation equals 0 plus 15x or y equals 15x. Substitute the value into the second equation. So we're using, they went ahead and used this as their tool and they put it in here. Right? So instead of y equals 3,000 plus 5x, they said 15x equals 3,000 plus 5x. So when, what does x have to be? How many t-shirts do you have to sell for the money you make to equal the money you spent? Now we spent $3,000 on a machine, so that's a lot of t-shirts we're going to have to sell, right? This is going to be a big number. Okay, so then if you go ahead and follow the math, Get rid of your smallest x minus 5x on both sides. So we get 10x equals 3,000. Divide by 10. x equals 300. x equals 300. So we're going to have to make and sell 300 shirts before we break even. Before the money we made matches the money we spent. So 300 shirts are sold. The income expenses are equal. Does the solution make sense in context of the problem? After selling 300 t-shirts, the income would be 4,500. The cost would be 4,500. So they'd be equal, right? $15 a shirt times 300 shirts is 4,500. The cost was 3,000 for the machine plus $5 per shirt times 300 shirts, 4,500 total, 4,500. So the amount, amount of money you made matches the amount of money you spent. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So by the time we get to this answer down here, right, or this answer, the x, x is 300, nobody cares how you got there, right? Nobody's, nobody's going to care that you used a system and how you wrote it and all that stuff. They just want the answer. So then you have to know, back in your bag of tricks, you have to pull out systems of equations. You got to know, okay, how could I solve this word problem up here? Hmm, I could use a system of equations. Here's how I do it. Okay, so we're going to do it a couple more times. It's the same situation. There's a t-shirt company. They buy a machine. They make t-shirts. They sell the t-shirts, right? But the amount of money, the income and all is going to change. So here it says a printing machine costs $5,000. So everything else is the same. Printing machine costs $5,000 and the t-shirts... Our $10 each of cost, t-shirt company change to give them value selling price. The selling price remains, okay, so the cost is $10 each instead of five. It says the selling price remains the same, so the shirts are still $15 each. Okay, so our cost and expense equations, our income equation is still y equals 15x because it doesn't, it's the cost of the shirt doesn't change it said it remains the same so you're selling it for 15 but the amount you spent changes right so now the total amount we spend is 5000 per the machine plus we're going to have to buy our shirts for $10 each instead of $5 right so here's our new system of equations i'm still going to solve it the same way i'm going to use this top guy as my tool I'm going to plug this in place of this y, and I'm going to solve, right? So I'm, not, I'm going to skip this for a second. 15x equals this 15x. I'm putting it in place of this y. 5,000 plus 10x. Okay? Sorry if I'm saying the same thing over and over. I try and say it different ways, and it all comes out the same exact way. <laughs> Just trying to make sure you understand the concept before trying to teach you, like, deep into the math. Okay, um, 15x and 10x, i got to get rid of the smallest x, so I minus 10x on both sides. These go away. 5x equals 5,000 divided by 5. So we're going to have to sell 1,000 shirts. Right? We're going to have to sell 1,000 shirts in order to break even if we had spent a lot more money up front on our machine and if we had to spend more money on the t-shirts. We're going to have to sell a lot more shirts instead of 300, like up here, we're going to have to sell 1,000. That's a lot, right? That's why businesses always want to try and cut their costs way down, the, the, the expenses they have. 
Gonna shop around and find the cheapest materials. Okay, let's do number 10, same exact situation. These are our expenses. So now the cost we're spending up front instead of 5,000, now it's only 2,100. And the cost per shirt is only $8 instead of $10, $10 from the last problem. So the amount of money we make is still $15 per shirt, but the amount of money we're spending, Y equals 2,100 on the machine plus $8 per shirt, okay? So again, we're gonna use the top equation as our tool. This is gonna go in place of Y. So I'm gonna write 15X equals 2,100 plus 8X. And then it's just algebra from there, right? Minus 8x on both sides, 7x equals 2100. x equals 300. Oh, we're back at 300 again, just like at the top. So in this case, that machine, we got a discount on it, right? Instead of up at the top, it was $3,000, right? Now it's only 2100. We don't have to spend as much on it, but we do have to spend more money on each shirt. Instead of five dollars each, what it was at the top, now it's eight. It's a little bit more, right? So over time, that adds up. But the extra cost here is counterbalanced by the less the the discount we got up here, right? I'm talking too much about money now. Hopefully, you understand the idea behind how to set up an equation from a word problem and how to solve it. If you have any questions, let me know.